Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the YouTube account and we are checking out a brand new guide that came out from In Season and AFK Analytica. So let's go ahead and break it down, guys. When it comes to the wish list, there is a pretty specific build that you have to put the heroes in here, especially if you are a beginner to AFK Arena. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, guys, so here it is, the wish list and Stargazer. So it has both of them from In Season and Firefly. Big shout out to them. This is absolutely amazing, guys. The, the graphics that they put together are phenomenal. Even looking at the build, even looking at the, the wish list itself, that is the reason I love this, guys, is it not only shows the signature item, but it shows the furniture and it shows the engraving that you want to take these heroes to. And for a majority of these heroes, because a lot of the older heroes are kind of phased out at this point, meaning that building these and really building these as a priority is big. And again, a lot of the older heroes were starting to see phased out entirely short of the tower. So this is the recommended wish list ascended from left to right below. Each hero are benchmark, signature item, furniture, and engraving. Now, of course, you can take them a little bit higher depending on where you are, but this is really the benchmarks of where you do want to build these heroes. So starting up top with the light bears, guys, Scarlet is still one of the absolute biggest priorities that we have in AFK Arena. It is kind of crazy, guys, that she still has a lot of utility. Very, very strong when it comes to damage. Also, again, starting off early, she can really carry a lot. When you start getting to the guild bosses, she is going to be the one that you're looking for. Now, with the rest of light bears, when you look at Palmer, Rowan, Rosline, even Rain, they can support scarlet in a very strong manner but they also support the awakened version of belinda um they have an incredible amount of support within afk arena um palmer of course the damage amplification factor the energy regeneration that we have with rowan rosline can actually double the ultimate ability and you can see the builds down here guys plus 20 signature item the three of nine furniture and then of course rain for the damage amplification with that three of nine furniture then when we look a little, little bit further, we do have Guineas back here, um, which again, all of the new primary four faction heroes, including the Celestials and Hypogens, require a pretty significant build to work well, which is the reason why, I mean, it's a 20, uh, 20930 right here on Guineas. And then we have Estrilda in here. Estrilda, of course, not for the warrior aspect, but Estrilda is still a really big buffer which kind of right rounds out um, the light bears, but Estrilda, definitely a hero that you do want to build, still using her a lot in AFK Arena. And when we get down to our Maulers, Naruko, guys, the tiny tank is huge. It, it is kind of crazy, not only with the buffs, with the healing, with the damage, with the plus 30 engraving rate here, it does add a crowd control aspect, which is massive when it comes to this hero and how well this hero performs. Then we have Crisio, boom, 20330. That is the minimum build that you want on him. And of course, with the damage dealers, Scarlet with Crisio, um, th these are the benchmarks. Like we said, the higher that you build them out, the more damage output you're going to see from them because they are very dependent on the stats. Then we get into Anasta, again, still doing pretty good um, damage. Still has that Brawler's Protection, which we look for. Scrag is, of course, the Invade team. Um, and I know some of the heroes kind of going back and forth. The Invade team still fundamentally does work. And then we have Skarath in here with that three of nine furniture, really all that you need him for to really focus on and build out that five pole. Now looking at Drez and looking at Kren, um, again, pretty good benchmarks right there. Drez, of course, single target damage. Um, Tower seems pretty effective. Um, Kren overall with the crowd control aspect, I still use him quite a bit. Um, as even at, if you're looking at some subs within AFK Arena, even subs within the tower, Kren is going to be probably the driving force for those towers. Now looking at our Wilders, guys, Trishia right here, very, very strong hero. I feel like a lot of he players um, really underestimated her. And again, she's another one similar to Crisio. The higher that you do build her out, the better she is going to perform for the damage-wise. Tamaris is a buffer. Um, crowd control and buffer is really what Tamaris is built for. Nevi, of course, massive, massive support in a bunch of different areas. We have Orin. Orin is a really big crowd control damage dealer. When it comes to the tower, when you look at Orin, um, honestly, he, he can almost carry a level or carry um, a stage by himself, especially if you do have him built out. And then, of course, Mishka, the, the little baby bear right there. Um, Mishka does incredibly well still with the crowd control aspect, seeing a lot of utility. 
And then looking a little further down the list, we have Peanut, little a star down here. Um, Raku, Raku is still showing up in some of the Cursed Realm formations. It's same with right here down with Saurus. And then um, with Pipple right down here, the plus 20 signature item, that is relevant to the Thorn Cheese and actually being able to teleport other targets within there. Then we get into our Graveborn guys, probably still one of the strongest factions. Damon is the absolute carry. So again, looking at this as being a earlier guide, um, Damon is going to be your absolute carry through AFK Arena. He can actually go through if you're building him up a little bit, probably about 30 chapters almost by himself. But then you put in the combination of Ivan. If you're running Ivan in a formation with Damon, where Damon is the strongest, um, Ivan just amplifies what he can actually do there. You can see guys plus 30 signature item, the engraving on Ivan. Then we have Grez. Grez, even though he is an older hero in AFK Arena, still an incredible amount of utility. Um, earlier game, not super effective, but as you do build him up a little bit and in, in the niche formations, when it comes to boss fights, things of that nature, he is going to be the hero that you're using. Then we have Silas, again, still a very, very solid buffer. And Oden, damage dealer with the energy disintegration and also with the displacement. Oden does incredibly well with Silas as a buffer. Oden in there, even running all five of these Graveborns together is a very, very strong team. So actually running um, double support and then double tanks with Oden is very, very strong. Now Edwin, of course, a little bit of a newer hero to AFK Arena, still does work incredibly well. Hodgkin in here, even though he is a tank, he is used for the crowd control and the buffing aspect that he has. Pharrell, which was an original hero in AFK Arena, still holding on, guys, with the crowd control, especially early works well. And then Thorin Cheese with a plus 30 signature item right there to get that double retaliation. Now, as we look a little bit further into the Stargazer priority, you can see right here, they do have Demia first, and then it is a massive, massive 30960 build out of Liberta. Um, essentially what is happening and what we're seeing is a hero like Liberta is just carrying everything. L literally, it, it, he is so strong. It, it's kind of crazy. Um, even earlier game, it, really just the, the damage amplification that the hero is putting out is kind of crazy. And then right here we have Lucila, and then it builds out Damia the rest of the way. Um, then we have a Thiel in here. Now again, we kind of went back and forth with building out um, Demia or Liberta first um, on the free to play account because I had already started Liberta, or excuse me, um, started Demia. We finished out Demia. Now the next priority is going to go to Liberta. Now um, one of the things in here is seeing the utility of the twins in Mortis. Um, I'm not sure exactly the, the logic behind not putting them in here at all. Um, just because again, even having a lower level, let's say a mythic plus 20 signature item twins, can make a really big difference in a lot of different game modes, especially when you're running Scarlet, when you're running a couple of different heroes. And then we have Vithiel in here. Vithiel, of course, a very, very big buffer. All know with that 9 of 9 furniture, super important for the survivability of heroes. Olgath in here, again, requires a very big build out. Kinesis and Rook, then we have Zorath, and then we have Halos. Pretty interesting to see how Halos has kind of fallen down the list quite a bit. Um, which again, utility wise, it is still there, but he's a hero that I'm not using as much as I used to. And I feel like, um, th there's not a, a ton of use cases that we're seeing him in anymore. It seems like between Damia and Liberta, um, that we've kind of replaced a lot of these heroes, which is kind of crazy to think, but as the power creep continues, as the, as the AFK arena continues to develop and grow guys, very, very cool guide that I definitely wanted to break down. So again, big shout out to AFK Analytica, to In Season and Firefly. Um, let me know in the comments. I will put a link down below for the guide. And as always, thank you guys for watching.